Uh, thank you to Sages and to the chairs of the session for um, the opportunity to present. I have no disclosures, and the disclosures of my co-authors are listed below. Achalasia is a chronic and progressive disease affecting the myenteric plexus of the esophagus and lower esophageal sphincter. The goal of treatment is to palliate symptoms and improve quality of life by modifying the LES to allow the esophagus to empty by gravity. Treatment options include calcium channel blockers, nitrates, pneumatic balloon dilation, Botox, esophageal myotomy, and peroral endoscopic myotomy. Surgical esophageal myotomy has traditionally been uh, uh, felt to be the most efficacious and durable intervention for treatment naive achalasia. The notion that esophageal myotomy is superior to pneumatic balloon dilation has recently been challenged. The multi-center randomized European achalasia trial was uh, recently uh, published their five-year results, and as uh, depicted in the graph above, esophageal myotomy and pneumatic balloon dilation have equivalent uh, results at five years. The treatment options for recurrence after esophageal myotomy in patients uh, with symptomatic achalasia are no different than treatment for uh, primary achalasia. Uh, patients have been traditionally treated with repeat esophageal myotomy, and this is largely due to the idea that recurrence is due to uh, inadequate myotomy or fibrosis in the myotomy site. In 2011, SAGES uh, released achalasia guidelines that suggested pneumatic balloon dilation for recurrent symptoms may be hazardous. This is not uh, a belief held by all experts in this area. Our preferred treatment of a recurrence is with serial pneumatic balloon dilation. Studies examining the safety and efficacy of pneumatic balloon dilation for recurrent symptoms of achalasia are scarce. Thus, we performed a retrospective review of our experience from January 2007 to August 2017. Patients were dilated under general anesthetic with fluoroscopic control. An EGD was done and a marker was placed at the GE junction. A wire was placed across the GE junction and the scope was removed. The GE junction was dilated with a Rigiflex uh, balloon and uh, held for 60 seconds after disappearance of the waste. A repeat EGD was then done to rule out bleeding or obvious perforation. Only one balloon size was used for each treatment encounter. If patients had residual symptoms six weeks after dilation, they underwent a subsequent dilation with a larger balloon. Symptoms were quantified before dilation and six weeks after dilation using the uh, well-established Eckhart score. This score measures uh, symptoms based on weight loss, dysphagia, retrosternal pain, and regurgitation. Our primary outcome was need for further endoscopic or surgical treatment after serial dilation to a maximum diameter of 40 millimeters. Treatment failure was considered an Eckhart score greater than three. Our secondary outcomes were complications. Additional variables measured were patient characteristics such as ASA, age, BMI, months to recurrence after esophageal myotomy, and Eckhart score recurrence. Surgical characteristics such as the fundification type and the need for concurrent tidal hernia repair. And additionally, diagnostic modalities used to uh, diagnose initial achalasia and recurrent achalasia were also recorded. Patients were seen six weeks after each pneumatic balloon dilation. If they were asymptomatic at the time, then they were instructed to contact our office if any recurrence of symptoms occurred. August 2017 was considered to be the last follow-up date for those without symptom recurrence. Numerical continuous data were expressed as median value and interquartile range. During the study period, a total of 104 esophageal myotomies were done. 87 had treatment success. There were 17 failures. Three of those underwent redo esophageal myotomy, and 14 were referred for pneumatic balloon dilation. The patient demographics are listed in the table. Recurrence after esophageal myotomy occurred at a median time of 28 months, and their Eckhart score at that time was six. The initial uh, method of diagnosis prior to esophageal myotomy in most patients was with uh, EGD, an upper GI series, and manometry. At our institution, uh, conventional manometry was used for the majority of the study period. The surgical characteristics of patients uh, were for the most part an esophageal myotomy with a door fundification. Only three patients had a concurrent tidal hernia repair. The method of diagnosis uh, of recurrent achalasia before pneumatic balloon dilation 
was either for most patients with an upper GI series and EGD or with an EGD alone. A total of 23 pneumatic balloon dilations were done. All patients were initially dilated at 30 millimeters and five had treatment success with only one dilation. Two were considered failure after 30 millimeter dilation. Both of these patients had a widely patent LES, low LES pressures and a dilated esophagus. And thus we felt repeat pneumatic balloon dilation or repeat esophageal myotomy would not be of any benefit for these patients. Seven went on to have additional dilation at 35 millimeters. Four of those had treatment success. One did not want to undergo a dilation at 40 millimeters and requested a repeat esophageal myotomy. And two underwent dilation at 40 millimeters and both these patients had treatment success. A total of 11 of 14 patients enjoyed treatment success. The median follow-up was 27.7 months for those who achieved treatment success, and there were no perforations, bleeding, or any other complications for the 23 pneumatic balloon dilations. This study is limited by its small size and its retrospective nature. However, achalasia is a rare disease with durable uh, uh, treatments for primary disease, and so recurrence is uh, obviously even more uh, uh, rare. Now, patients had long-term follow-up only at their own request, and so there is the potential that some patients may have developed symptoms and either didn't seek treatment or saw treatment at another center. However, in our region, we're the only center that provides treatment uh, options for recurrent achalasia, and so we feel this is less likely. In summary, pneumatic balloon dilation is a safe and efficacious method of treating symptoms of achalasia after esophageal myotomy. We found a 71% treatment success at a medium follow-up is 27.7 months. There were no complications. In centers with expertise, pneumatic, pneumatic balloon dilation can be considered as a first-line treatment for recurrent symptoms of achalasia after esophageal myotomy. Thank you for the opportunity to present, and I'd be happy to take any uh, questions. Excellent presentation. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Ralph A. Very nice presentation. Nice work. Um, one would think perhaps that the ones that would respond the best would be those early after their original operation, that it might be a scarring issue. You did have the duration from the interval from initial myotomy until um, balloon dilation, the median. Did you notice any correlation between, with success as far as the interval from broad operation? Yeah, that, uh, thank you for that question. So um, there was quite a, a range. I didn't list it here, but the uh, the range of uh, symptom recurrence was, you know, from three months to 102 months. And so uh, uh, certainly um, there are, is the potential that that may have been the case, although we did not look specifically at uh, the rate of success based on uh, a length of time to, to be able to comment on that. If you still have the opportunity, you may want to look, look at that because one would think that later recurrence might be more related to the underlying motility disorder as opposed to scarring. It would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I also have uh, another question. I was just wondering for those seven people and subsequently for the other two that required um, uh, to be dilated at a higher uh, uh, level, what was the time interval between the dilatations? Is it sort of like if it doesn't work immediately within the next couple of weeks, you redilated them? Or what was the time interval between those sequel dilatations? Yeah, thank you. So um, we, we did no on-demand dilation in our study, and no one required it after they had treatment success. So they were seen in clinic at six weeks. And if they had any residual uh, uh, symptoms uh, based on uh, an ECHR score greater of three, then uh, they were booked for another uh, dilation at a larger balloon size. Go ahead. I, I have one question. Um, in your abstract, um, three uh, treatment failure patient had um, significant esophageal uh, uh, peristaltic on manometry. Um, should we perform the manometric study before PBD to uh, predict the effect of PBD? Um, so, certainly, uh, if a patient had sigmoid esophagus and obvious end-stage achalasia, they'd be less likely to respond to a pneumatic balloon dilation and thus potentially uh, may not be necessary. But on the sort of on the other side, uh, if they are symptomatic and they have um, uh, 
we have a procedure that uh, has a very low um, morbidity profile that an attempted uh, dilation may be uh, of value to see if there's any uh, uh, treatment effect or any uh, resolution of symptoms, at least partially. Thank you.